When we form a hypothesis test, we always assume the null hypothesis is true. That's extremely important is that every time you do a hypothesis test, your assumption is the null hypothesis is true. There's only two possible decisions. You either reject the null hypothesis or you don't reject the null hypothesis. Now we say you reject the null hypothesis or you fail to reject the null hypothesis. Of course, being math, we have to make it sound more confusing. <laughs> okay, so note that the claim that is made is independent of your decision regarding the null hypothesis. The claim can be the null hypothesis or the alternative hypothesis. So your decision about the null hypothesis has nothing to do with what the claim was. Okay, so it's important to recognize that. Now, since we're going to make our decision based on a sample, it's always possible that we make it a mistake in our decision. So, so when somebody makes a claim about a population mean, say, we're going to collect a sample and see if our sample matches up with what our null hypothesis says. That's essentially the idea. But it's always possible because we're basing our decision on a sample, it's possible that we make a mistake. And what a type one error is, is that we reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is really true. And a type two error is, we fail to reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is really false. And a good way to think about that is a courtroom trial. We always assume the defendant is innocent until proven guilty. So we assume the defendant is innocent until enough as evidence is presented to declare him guilty. What a type one error would be is rejecting that he is innocent because we're assuming he's innocent. That's the null hypothesis. We assume they're innocent. So a type one error is rejecting that he is innocent when he really is innocent. So in that case, that would be sending an innocent person to jail. Okay, and just think about how bad that is to do. Okay, that, that's a bad mistake to make or a bad error. A type two error would be failing to reject that he is innocent. So failing to reject the null hypothesis when he, when he really is not innocent. So that would be a case of setting a guilty person free. Now it's generally agreed upon that a type one error is the more meaningful error. And you've all seen documentaries on Netflix about, you know, like DNA exonerating innocent people and, you know, cases like that. It, it, it is a really tragic situation when an innocent person gets sent to jail. Okay? Um, especially if it's for a very serious crime like murder or rape or something like that. Okay, um, where, where, where they might be doing a lot of uh, time. Okay, so it's generally agreed upon the type one errors are the worst error to make. Okay, and what alpha is, okay, alpha, this little Greek letter, represents the maximum allowable probability of the type one error of rejecting HO when it's really true. We want that to be small, typically values are alpha is 0.1, 0 0.05 and 0 0.01. So all that's basically saying is we want to have the probability of sending an innocent person to jail be very small. Like we don't want that to happen often. Okay, so that's how you want to think about alpha. That's the maximum allowable probability of the type 1 error. Okay, and again, 0 0.1, 0 0.05, and 0 0.01 are very common values for alpha. Okay, and remember the reason we're talking about this is the idea is going to be we're either going to re reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. So how willing we are to make an error, that type 1 error, is going to play into whether we reject the null hypothesis or not. Okay, so, so that's why the error of a test is, is very important.